what makes a good deer food? I mean, what do deer choose if, if you gave them, out, gave them a choice of things out there to eat? So we designed this little study where we put uh, different components to feed. We put a, a identical feeders out there. One had protein in it, one had corn in it, one had salt in it, and one had just mineral in it. And let the deer have free access to it, and they could just pick and choose and go which, whichever one they wanted to, okay? Like Dr. Crow said, one of the things that's really important and lacks a lot of time in, in, our, in our habitat is digestible energy, particularly during the hot, dry part of the summer. You know, it's not just protein, it's, it's energy that they need. I mean, deer will go out there and eat corn. Okay. So we, do, I got, we got a, a bunch of data off of this, but I'm just going to show you a few things out of it. We just looked at, okay, you know, separated the bucks between the yearling bucks and, and the fork bucks. You to see if there's any difference between older deer and younger deer, see if, you know, antler growth had anything to do, do to it. And it really didn't. Uh, I mean, bucks were just being bucks, no matter, no matter their age or size. But see, you look at when they were eating it. They really start, started really getting all corn. When it got hot and dry during the summer, they really started searching out that corn and looking for it. The protein pellets. Yeah, again, I mean, this is the difference between bucks and does, does and red, bucks and bucks and blue. Look at the difference between between the bucks and does. Which ones they were choosing at different times of the year. I mean, they had completely different nutritional requirements. I mean, the bucks have have it pretty easy during the summer. I mean, they're laying around in the shade, picking their teeth, burping, telling lies. Not much to do during the summer, okay? But the does are out there working all summer, raising fawns. But things completely change during the winter time. When the bucks are having to start having to start work, those does have weaned off those fawns and not to worry about them anymore. And and minerals. I mean, deer are out there providing minerals for a whole lot of other creatures out there. You've probably seen. I mean, cows eat, eat these. The other deer will, will chew on these to get mineral if they need to. But if you look at at the salt minerals, a lot of people want to just put that out as, as attractants you know, instead, instead of putting out feed. We put out just salt by itself and let, let the deer choose. This is what, that, this is what it did. <coughs> you can see a little, little blips in there, but it was just almost inconsequential. I mean, one deer showed up this month. One deer showed up that month. One deer showed up that month. It's not, it's not a big attractant. It was not a, a destination place where they were going to every day. All right? Same thing with mineral. If, you, if you're going to put out a mineral, okay, I mean, put out a loose mineral. Don't put out a, a, a big cattle mineral blocks uh, that you get at the feed store. A loose mineral, you, it's, it's best not to just pour it on the ground like this, but, but if it, you know, you can do this, but, but move it around. Don't, don't keep using the same spot year after year if you do it. Well, here's, here's a mineral feeder, and you can see, you know, how much use it was getting. It, it's a bird nest you know, in the, in the spout of that feeder. Again, when you look at it, I mean, it's almost inconsequential use. Now, I know there's, there's some areas where people put out mineral, put out salt, and they can get deer to come to it. But that's telling me that, that, that they have a, a, a nutritional deficit in what they're doing with their, with their supplementation program. If you're, the best way to put minerals in your deer is through fertilization, whether it's native forage or through your food plots. You fertilize and you put those minerals in the deer. Or if you're putting out a, a pr good protein pellet with a good mineral vitamin package in it, they're going to get it that way. Okay? That's a much better way to do it than try to pour mineral on the ground. Again, each one of those, each one of those things that you do, it, like Dr. Crow said, talk about that 80-acre grid. You, know, you want to have a situation like this. This is an ideal situation uh, on our research area there. You know, we, got, we got the tall trees for summer thermal cover, we got a food plot, we got a feeder right back there that you can't see, we got the, the low thick brush for feeding and for winter thermal cover, we got a water source, one-stop shopping. And if you get, get in the middle of your 80 acres and look around, okay, can I see all of that somewhere in there? That's what you're looking for. And that feeder is, I mean, that protein feeder is, is associated with that food plot, but it's not right on the food plot, okay? So you can hunt that food plot and, and don't scare those deer and make them think that that feeder is a bad place to be. They feel safe coming there, okay? And putting your feeder, you know, 
what he put it is, is deer are edge species, but when they, they move, they travel around between the edges of one habitat type and another habitat type. That's where they like to move. That's where you're going to put your feeder, where deer are comfortable to it, getting to it, but also where you can be comfortable getting to it. Because if you don't go out there and check it all the time and make sure there's feed in there, it's going to run dry. And an empty feeder is nothing but an, an expensive ornament. Okay? It's got to have feed in it for you to work for you. And you can count on one feeder taking care of about 12 to 15 deer. You may be able to push it a little bit further than that, but you don't, really don't want to because there's a lot of social interactions that go around, around those feeders. You know, this is a spin feeder. It's a great way to bait deer. It's a very poor way to feed deer. Protein. Don't try to put your protein pellets in a spin feeder, okay? Because you ain't going to throw out enough to make it do any good. If it falls on the ground, you've got any kind of moisture, whether it's just foggy in the morning, you've got any kind of dew. Those protein pellets hit that moisture, they dissolve, and deer won't eat them, okay? So it doesn't do you any good. And if they get wet, they clog up your feeder. Again, you've got a smelly mess to work to deal with. And you gotta, you gotta, when you put out new feeders, you've got to train your deer to use them. They don't know what it is instinctively. A lot of times when you first put them out there, you put them out, the best time is, is the hottest, driest, worst time in the habitat is try to, that's the time you try to train your deer to feeders. Okay? A lot of times we'll put corn in those feeders to get, get deer started. Then we mix corn and pellets together have a spin feeder next to it, get them deer coming up there close to it. If it's, I know it's going to be drying and I got time, I go out there and put little piles of corn and put little piles of protein on top of it. So they get used to accepting protein as a food source. And they find those, they find those tubes and they start eating out. I'm pretty soon you got, you got your deer on it. Other deer watch them eat it. Fawns watch them eat it. They all learn how to, how to use your feeders. But why you need a lot of more feeders than you think out there is Mature bucks are going to dominate a feeder. They will keep young bucks away. They'll keep does away until they're done. I mean, they'll, all the other young deer, does will be walking around on the outside, you know, wanting to get in there, but the old bucks won't let them. So you need to have more than one feeder out there for your different classes of deer. Okay? And even among the does, there's going to be a lot of social interactions. I mean, a doe group is usually made up of, of, a, of an old doe, her daughters, her granddaughters, and so forth. But the old doe is the one that runs, runs the show. She tells everybody else where to go, when they can eat, and what they can do. Okay? So she will, she will knock them knock away, away from the feeder. So you need to have you more out there than you think you need to have. 